you need to acquire your first, your first ACD or dialer, you know, inbound solution or dialer. The question is, should you buy it outright, which means that you're going to have a significant capital outlay, regardless of the size, because it's always relative to your operating environment, or should you rent it by going with a cloud-based solution? So let's walk through an example and see how to build a financial um, TCO model. Now, there's a lot of factors that you want to take into consideration when you're thinking about acquiring a new contact center solution. May it be on-premise or you know, in the cloud. We're going to be concentrating today on the financial aspects of it, um, but there are other considerations as well. So let's just kind of walk through some of them, and I'm going to go through some of these at a pretty in-depth level. Another thing that you want to consider when you're thinking about um, what it is you're going to buy is what resources you need to actually maintain that solution. So first obvious question is, do you have two types of expertise on staff? Do you have people who know how to operate that contact center from a technical perspective, right? how to install it, how to maintain it, um, how to make sure your servers are up and running, um, you know, how to change the configurations um, on a daily basis, how to connect it to your carriers. And the second thing is, is do you have the business knowledge to help you to try to optimize the use of the contact center solution? Maybe inbound, maybe outbound, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you need to have both technical and business. And I mean, this is one of the big things to consider when you're, when you're thinking about which way to acquire. If you have the people on site, okay, great. If you don't, then part of what you're acquiring when you, are, when you go to the cloud is that expertise, okay? Another major consideration is integrations. Um, and this is one of those areas that's been driving me crazy for a very long time. Um, when I buy a new contact center solution, and I've implemented a lot of these things and managed a lot of these things, um, I have to give a lot of thought to what types of integrations I need for my operating environment. And I would think that the vendor would bring those integrations to the table, um, whether they'd be on-premise or in the cloud, but integrations is one of those areas where premise-based vendors make a lot of money. Um, they don't classically reuse what they've done for other organizations. Uh, and while they could have APIs and SDKs to facilitate the integration, they don't necessarily do that. This is one of those places where the cloud-based vendors absolutely get it. And they understand that their mission is to get you up and running as quickly as possible. And so therefore, they don't typically charge a lot for the integration. So you need to consider your integration costs. Now, another area of consideration is ongoing innovation. And I'll tell you, this is an area that is a pet peeve for me, a real pet peeve. I mean, I have bought more systems, finally got it through the paperwork that needed to be done, finally get it you know, to the point where we get the schedule, the implementation. Lo and behold, I discovered there's a new release out there. And of course, I can't get it. And there's two ways that I can't get it. The vendor is not going to let me just say, you know, yes, I want the newer release. Here's a few extra bucks. Um, and in addition, trying to go through the entire business case development in order to get it on an internal basis just isn't going to happen because, you know, the C, the COO, the CFO is going to look at me and say, hey, I just approved this really big investment, please don't come back to the table. So one of the benefits of going with the cloud is that you do typically get the ongoing innovation to anything that you have. Now, there are some exceptions to that. So for example, if a cloud-based vendor adds, um, you know, typically just does ACD or dialer, and then they decide to add in um, a, a workforce management, that may not be included, but even if it's not included, um, the ongoing cost of it, the cost to acquire it, uh, which will be ongoing, will still be um, less than, you know, by far than if you have to go ahead and bring it in, um, you know, via capital investment. Then we have the issue of reliability. And when you think about putting a solution up and running, you need to be sure that that solution is running fully redundant, which means that you have to pretty much buy double what it is you need. Some of the premise-based vendors will have a reduced cost for the backup system, but one way or the other, you need to have basically two full systems 
um, in the vast majority of cases. There are some ways of getting around some of that, but you're still working for that goal. When it comes to the cloud-based vendor, part of what it is that you're buying is you're buying the full redundancy. And actually one of the things you want to make sure of is, is that any cloud-based vendor that you're looking at is running in a fully redundant environment. So if there is an issue, they can get you up and running really quickly. Now the last item on the list you know, of top consideration is security. I mean, you know, every time I pick up the paper, um, there's something interesting, not interesting, but really sad about break-ins. What was it, two weeks ago? You know, we were talking about the 76 million records that were broken into J.P. Morgan Chase. Um, I'm here in Jackson, Alabama today, actually, and there was something in the paper about a half billion records that were just accessed. I walked through it quickly. Security is a serious issue. Whether you are on-premise, whether it's an on-premise system, whether it's an in-cloud system, and regardless, you need to have the, your security people, your IT people in, involved in the selection process and make sure that that vendor meets the needs of your organization. So now, we've drilled in at a high level at a lot of the, you know, the top considerations. Let's now take a look at the scenario that we're going to be discussing from a financial perspective. So, you know, as I was saying, you want to take into consideration all these different factors. Here's the scenario. The scenario that we're going to be building a total cost of ownership model for is that this is an organization with 250 seats, so it's pretty, pretty well set in the mid-range. Um, it is a single site operating environment, which actually doesn't make a difference to the cloud-based vendor in most cases, but does make a difference to the premise-based vendors, and it would be more expensive if it was uh, a premise-based acquisition, if it was multiple channels, multiple sites. We're talking about two channels here. In this case, let's assume that we're talking about the phone and chat, but it could be the phone and email. Um, you know, it, 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 it could be a you know, variety of different channels. Now, this implementation is going to use Touchtone IVR, and they're also going to need some new scripts. So what we're talking about this script is what is it that the end user hears when they call in. So they're going to need those developed. And then, due to the importance of integrations, we want to do screen pop, right, so then we need the integration to our CRM. We want our IVR, our, you know, our touchstone IVR voice response system to be able to access the data that it needs. So we need the integration. It could be to the CRM. It could be to another back office system. And of course, we need to do workforce management, WFM, so we need the integration on that end. So this is the scenario. But, but keep in mind, you know, I'm going to go through some numbers. We're going to give you a framework for helping you create the total cost of ownership model, which you're going to use as part of your business case. So keep in mind, you can up and down these numbers you know, as, as you want. So if you only have 50 seats, you can just change it out and put in 50 instead of you know, what it is that we're talking about here. Now, let's take a look at the next slide and really start to get into the total cost of ownership model. And we chose to do a total cost of ownership. So there's TCO, total cost of ownership, which is really looking at the budget impact of a capital investment. You could also do an ROI analysis. And a lot of the steps are the same. The calculations are different. When you're talking about return on investment, you're taking into consideration the value of the investment. So since we wanted to do this on a generic basis, right? So it, can apply to everyone and not have it look for the specific benefits that the contact center solution is going to contribute to your operating environment, we did TCO. But when you're building a business case, you can either do TCO or ROI. Without a doubt, my strong suggestion is when you start to think about doing this, touch base with your, with your controller, with your CFO, chief financial officer, and ask that person what for their financial model because a lot of larger organizations will have them. If they don't have it to give you a disk or point you to, to a link in the SharePoint or wherever, um, then you know, we, we suggest that you, can, you know, that you use Excel. We used Excel to create the models that we're going to go in after. So here's the scenario that we're talking about. We're talking about 250 um, agencies that are needed. So on premise, at an average cost of $16.50 for the software, and keep in mind, we're talking about two channels, and the premise-based vendors will charge you for the, each of the different channels that need to be supported. We're talking about an average cost of about um, $412,000 for the software. 
okay, now we need servers and we've got to run fully redundant. So, you know, we threw in about 30000 for the servers. It could be a few dollars less. It could be a few dollars more. Now, the installation, integration, and training costs, we grouped it all together so that I could get everything on one slide. But think about it this way. The installation costs will run somewhere between 120 to 145 depending on the vendor that you go with. The integration costs will run somewhere between 20 and, let's say, 35 depending on the number of integrations. We're talking about three. And so, you know, the costs of these have been coming down from the premise-based vendors. So there we're talking about a cost of about 195 um, for the premise-based. Um, and then the cost of training, uh, we put in at about 20K. But, it's, you know, please don't think of that as just being agent training. That's going to be agent training and management training and administration training and reporting training. So lots of training, some of which could be on your site, some of which could be elsewhere. So, yeah. And then, you know, the other thing we put in is just some general professional services. Uh, the premise-based vendors um, do charge a significant number for those. Um, so when you add all of that up, you get to about $698,000, 697.5, right? And when you look at it from the cloud side, um, it's not, there's no capital investment here to buy it. You don't need to have servers in most cases, although if it turns out that you do need to have recording servers on site, you will have to spend the five to $8,000 to put a recording server on site, um, but that's very rare that that happens. Um, then in terms of the installation, integration, and training, there is no installation costs, um, or very, very little, I should say, typically for a cloud-based vendor. There could possibly be some costs for integration, so, um, but it's really not going to be much higher than what it is you see here, which is about $20,000 when you add it all in. When it comes to IVR development, here's another case where the vendors are pretty realistic on the cloud side. They want to get, cloud-based vendors want to get you up and running, and they earn their living by keeping you up and running on an ongoing basis. They have learned um, over the years not to charge a lot for things that a lot of the premise-based vendors make a significant amount of their profits from. So there can be a little bit of cost, can be a little bit of cost in order to write your IVR application, but also the cloud-based vendors, they own everything they create, right? So they can reuse code. They have lots and lots of out-of-box APIs and SDKs for integrations. And with the whole emphasis just to get you up and running. And then I also threw in some professional services costs. So now when you're looking at a TCO model or an ROI model, um, you'll see, as I did here, that I broke it into one-time costs and then the annual ongoing costs. We've just gone through the one-time costs. The next thing is, okay, what are the annual costs? And this is where we're going to start to see some significant costs on the path of the cloud-based vendors. Um, but let's just kind of, again, walk through and compare and contrast. So what we have here is we've got the software maintenance costs, which runs, in this case, we've put in 22% of the li software license fees. They typically run somewhere between um, 20 and 24, so we pick the, pick the middle number. The hardware costs we put in at 20%, and that's pretty classic. Now, when it comes to the monthly usage fees, then we have a cost, um, nothing for the premise-based vendor, and this is where the costs start to come in for the cloud-based vendor. We've got 270000 there, and I'll tell you where that comes from. Since we're doing this webinar, um, and the sponsor of this webinar is Connect First, we're, of course, using their costs, and that means a cost of $108 for the scenario that I described um, per per agent, per seat, basically. And I will point out that Connect First costs are some of the lower ones um, in the marketplace. Um, so, you know, depending on, on the vendor, that number could go up a little bit. Um, now, the most interesting thing on the annual ongoing is that last line, which is the in-house admin and IT support costs. So on-premise, we're assuming that if you have to maintain this, yourself, this system yourself, put it in, maintain it, you have to have at least two people because you never, ever want to have one person. And it's totally on your shoulders, so that's two people, and we assume an average cost around the country fully loaded of about 96. And then we also thought it's going to take another at least half a person. It could be a network person. It could be a telecom person, whatever it happens to be. So that's how we got to two and a half. So that's what makes this cost so high on an ongoing basis. Now, when it comes to the cloud side, you're still going to want to have some support.
So, you know, it depends on the deal, of course, that you cut with the vendor. There's a lot of situations where the vendors take care of everything for you. But more and more organizations want to be able to do some of the management themselves. And if only to interact with the vendor. So I'm always conservative on that. And I always recommend to my clients that they dedicate at least a half FTE, which is how we got to the 48,000. So the hardest part in doing a TCO model, an ROI model, any of these, is actually making sense out of the numbers that you get from the vendors when you send out an RFP. And um, so, you know, we make it look pretty easy here with this type of thing, but I've worked with clients who, before bringing us on to help them, for example, um, you know, could have spent three months just trying to get the vendors to reconcile, reconcile the numbers for them. So, you know, this looks pretty easy, but I will say is, you know, it takes a lot of time. So now let's take a look at the next slide, and we're going to look at the cash flow. So we know what our costs are. And what we want to do next is do the classic cash flow analysis. And we still break it into the two categories, right, on-premise versus cloud. So, and we're going to compare the cash flow of the premise base to the cloud, and then we're going to come up with what the difference is. So you literally copy and paste your numbers over. So um, if looking at the on-premise, we know our costs, our startup costs are 697.5. And then, again, just copying it over, it comes in year one, year two, year three, at the same 336.750. Um, in the year four, you're going to need to replace your premise-based servers. Whether it's in year three, year four, um, depends on your organization. But you're going to want to upgrade those servers. But we still left it at 30K for the reason that we're getting more and more processing power for less dollar. So it's likely that you'll need a little bit more processing power um, because you will have added on capabilities at that point, very likely. But in the meantime, so that's why you have the 30,000 hitting in that year. So now when we move in the costs, we look down and move in the cost for the cloud-based scenario, right? We, we take the startup cost of 23,625, and then we add in the ongoing operating costs, which is the cost of licensing and then the cost of your half FTE. And we kept that flat just as, as we did above. And then we net it out. So what do we save in this case by going to the cloud versus on-premise? And we can see in year zero, we save cash out so we don't have to spend 673875 by when we go to the cloud-based vendor. And then each year, um, we save 18750 And, you know, it is very likely, by the way, that these numbers will go up a little bit. But again, we're, we're taking an ultra-conservative. So then we take the cumulative effect of this, which turns into 797625 You look under year five, pretty much the second line from the bottom there. But that's just one of the steps because we still have the NPV. We have the net present value, future dollars in today's dollars. And a dollar tomorrow, tomorrow is worth a lot less than a dollar today. And we're doing that using a 12% cash cost of capital, which is very typical for organizations, which is how we get the cost um, to the net present value of 76530. And what that means is that by going with a cloud-based solution, versus an on-premise solution for the same type of solution over a five-year period, which we use because that's the classic depreciation time frame, you will save $760,000, $761,000, okay? Pretty significant. Now, there's another piece that you want to look at when you're looking at the financial impact. Let's take a look at the next slide, and that's the outgoing cash flow impact of this, okay? And so what you do here, is you just look on an annual basis from zero through five, and you put what the cost is. So you can see the cash out is 1.6 if it's cloud-based implementation, and it's 2.4 million if it is an on-premise. Now, let me kind of bring this back together. If you're building a business case to convince your management, here's the pieces that you need in it. It doesn't have to be a long business case. You need to have an executive summary, then you need to have, which, which can be a half page, by the way, and, and actually the shorter the better in most cases. Then you put together a, you know, what this is all about. That should be a one-pager. And then you need the three slides, three of the slides that we had there. You need to have what the scenario is. Then you need to build the model. Um, actually, four slides. You want to have the scenario really easy. Here's what you're buying. 
then you want the TCO model, then you want the cash flow analysis, then you want the, then you want the cash flow summary. That is a fantastic business case. And yes, simple, the simpler you keep it, the clearer it is, the better chance you have, believe it or not, of getting approved. So now let me wrap up on the next slide. And what these are are the benefits of going with a cloud-based contact center solution because it's a really different world. When it comes to the acquisition side, and there's four major categories that I'm going to look at here, we're going to start by, by talking about the acquisition. We're talking about no capital investment. Um, we're talking about minimal startup costs. Um, almost in all cases, no hardware or very little hardware, and you pay for what it is you use. Now, keep in mind, though, that you are going to have um, pretty substantial or sizable monthly operating costs because that's how it is you pay these vendors. And you avoid something that nobody has a lot of appreciation, and that's you, you don't have the maintenance costs. Okay. From an integration perspective, as I pointed out, the cloud-based vendors get it. So they understand that you don't want to pay them for startup. You don't want to pay them for integration. You don't want to pay them for IVR. You want to pay them on a monthly basis. So I will tell you that 10 years ago when this market was first developing, there, used, there were a lot of costs in there. But slowly but surely, the vendors realized that they want to get you up and running. And they'll make back some of the money that they put into it. I mean, that's their business model over the life of the contract. So they keep these costs really low, and it's done intentionally. Um, when it comes to upgrades, as I pointed out, absolutely a pet peeve because I have been burn, burnt with this so many times. You will typically get all of the upgrades, and then it's up to you to decide when it is you want to take advantage. But you don't have to take your systems down. You don't have to do a forklift. You don't have to go back to the office of the CFO and beg. Um, you get most of the innovation on an ongoing basis. Um, and then when it comes to standard support, you don't pay for maintenance, as I talked about. What you do pay for is you pay your monthly rate. And then there's some other options that increasingly the vendors are going be doing with, with cloud-based solutions because they are giving you an opportunity to um, basically do a managed service. So you can basically rent somebody, and it can be the same person to help you five hours a month. It could be 10 hours a month. There are some organizations I know that actually have a couple people dedicated to it because they're pretty complex environments. So with that, um, I want to thank you for allowing me to share with you um, the importance of building um, an effective business model. And I want to pass you over to Connect First to EO Jeff. Yeah, so now we're going to go ahead and start the part, um, Jeff's part of the presentation. Thank you, Donna, for the informative presentation. Jeff Minna leads the company's strategic direction and is also the primary architect of the Connect First platform. He has taken the product through four generations in a desire to develop the most feature-rich, highly scalable, fault-tolerant, and secure cloud-based contact center solution on the market. Jeff has over 15 years of experience in the cloud telecommunications space. Thanks, Shelby, and thanks, Donna, for a pretty compelling presentation. I want to talk about three concrete examples. Um, these are real Connect First customers that at some point over the last few years were presented with the decision to either try to do something on premises or choose a, a cloud based solution. I'm going to start with a, uh, a government and um, nonprofit example. Probably a lot of you are uh, sick of getting calls at this time of year. Um, but this, this particular example we're going to talk about is kind of a, a special use case in that it's focusing on a volunteer-based effort. So the traditional political outreach efforts have always been outsourced. So a, a campaign will hire a commercial call center to make calls on their behalf. Now that doesn't really lend itself to the highest quality contacts. Before cloud-based solutions were an option, the, the campaigns didn't have a lot of choice. They couldn't go out and spend a million dollars for six weeks of calling. Um, you know, building out that infrastructure just, it, it didn't work for them. 
So with the, uh, the introduction of the cloud-based solutions, they were able to go out and engage with the vendors for very short periods of time, either you know, maybe six months leading up to the campaigns to sometimes as short as the two weeks right before the camp, right before the election, um, for get out the vote efforts. So there's a there's a couple of specific requirements here when you're talking about a volunteer-based group. One is ease of use. Um, two is you're going to have limited infrastructure. Uh, three, you need to really have high efficiency from the dialers because a bunch of volunteers standing around not talking to people are going to get bored and they're going to go home. And it needs to be cost effective. The, the phone is becoming less and less effective as a get out the vote tool, so the costs need to be in line with the result that the campaign is going to get by still making phone calls. So using a hosted solution, these campaigns can have their volunteers in warehouses, leased out office space, short term, uh, borrowed space from law firms, etc. with very limited infrastructure. Um, a lot of times they don't even have computers for the volunteers, it's just phone only. Uh, just a lot of this technology and capability you can't get with a premise-based centralized piece of equipment. So there's, there's no capital expenditure for these guys. They just pay by the minute. Um, they expand from tens or hundreds of agents to thousands of agents over a very short period of time. And the integrations, as Donna was talking about, are critical here, uh, especially those last couple of days around the elections. They need to know who they've talked to, who they communicated to, and whether they said they needed a ride to the polls, et cetera. And all that data needs to feed back into the into the voter data systems in real time. Um, so you can see huge cost savings, big increase in productivity and efficiency, and the data and reporting are there through all the integration capabilities. So this is this is an interesting case because it was really created by the introduction of cloud-based technologies. The, the volunteer segment didn't exist when there was just a premise-based option. Okay, um, the next one, we're going to talk about nutrition manufacturing. This is really uh, a nutraceutical company. So they manufacture uh, nutraceutical products and buy short and long term or short and long form infomercial space uh, on TV. So it's another great use case where they're spending a ton of money on their advertising. So to also spend a ton of money on premise based equipment doesn't really work with their business model. Ultimately their manufacturing and advertising is where they need to be spending their, uh, their capital. So some of their challenges are big call spikes. So you go out and buy 30 minutes of TV space, you're going to get a lot of calls during that 30 minute window and probably nothing after that commercial's over. So to have excess capacity laying around all the time when maybe you're only running two or three spots a day isn't really cost effective. Additionally, if you don't buy all that excess capacity and you're returning busy signals to your callers, that's just wasted advertising dollars. And again here, integrations are a huge piece. Uh, typically, the nutrition manufacturer isn't doing the order fulfillment. So all these calls and all this data needs to flow back into order fulfillment and order management systems. And uh, you know, the integration and the data flow uh, are, are big, big focuses for these guys. So they needed this to be cost effective. They needed it to be highly fault tolerant. Uh, you don't want to go spend $100,000 on a TV spot and not have your phones being answered. It needs to be scalable, and they needed to save time through the automation systems. The bringing on Connect First helped them achieve all of these uh, needs and has allowed them to scale their business about 10 times what they were when they originally started with us. So this is a, it's a great use case um, and a good example of when you spend your money where you should be spending your money and maybe not on premise technology, you can be very effective. 
let's head over to the next example here. So now we're going to kind of get into some compliance requirements. Um, this company uh, is an international BPO and they serve big pharmaceutical and medical device manufacturers. And what they do is they recruit patients for clinical trials and then manage that patient interaction throughout the clinical trial. Again, cost savings is a huge need. Uh, they're focusing on paying registered nurses as their call center agents. So that's not the cheapest business model when you're talking about filling massive call centers all with RNs. You're going to have to compensate them pretty well. So their capital is going to their human resources and they really can't afford to spend a few million dollars a year on premise-based equipment. Additionally, compliance is a big piece. They didn't want to spend the money to have full compliance employees managing the data, managing the storage and security and transmission of that data. Using a cloud vendor that has a focus on data security and compliance can help alleviate a lot of the cost associated with becoming and staying compliant, whether that's PCI or HIPAA or any of the government regulations that require data security. Redundancy and uptime, I mean, that's important for everybody. Same for these guys. They are doing high visibility work uh, for some, some of the biggest companies in the world. So if their calls aren't being answered and that's impacting their clinical trials, that's not going to be good for anybody. The real-time reporting, huge piece here. Uh, again, integrations and data flow back to uh, the, the actual pharmaceutical and device manufacturers, so they're staying up to date on what's happening in their clinical trials. The, the results here are pretty compelling. Um, using a multitude of the tools built into the Connect First platform, they've reduced their errors, increased their conversions, uh, patient adherence with the, the better communication channels to the actual uh, clinical trial participants, all of it's been increased at the same time saving money and having higher uptime than they could have probably achieved with a, a premise-based solution. So these are three good examples of business cases that almost couldn't have existed uh, on a premise-based equipment because it would have so drastically changed their cost structure um, that you know they may not have been able to launch and grow a business without the ability to use a cloud-based solution, reduce their capital expenditure, and have a, a great performing product from an uptime and uh, compliance standpoint. So I'm going to thank you for attending today. I think Donna shared a lot of great information. Hopefully a couple of these actual concrete use cases help put some of what Donna was talking about into perspective. And uh, hopefully we have some good questions we can answer for you guys now. Yeah, absolutely. We got a, quite a few good questions that came in through the comments. So let's go ahead and hit some of those out. Um, so is it always less expensive to use a cloud-based solution? Jeff, I think you would have a good answer for this one. That's, it's a difficult question to answer. Um, to say that something is always true is probably not going to be true. Um, there's going to be fringe cases where it's going to be cheaper to have a premise-based solution. Um, typically, they're going to be less sophisticated deployments, um, very limited scope in what you're trying to do. You know, but to say that a cloud solution is always going to be cheaper over a four or five year period, uh, I, I would say that's probably not true. But I think for the vast majority of enterprise contact centers that have data integration and compliance concerns, absolutely cloud solutions are going to be cheaper. What are your thoughts, Donna? Yeah, I think that's, that's very, very true. Um, and you know, let me let me use a car example with this. Um, classically, uh, if you're going to keep a car, if you let's let's say you want to buy a new car, and um, it, you know, it could be that you don't have the down payment, you know, to buy a, you know, to, to actually go out and purchase it, 
Um, it could be that you want more car than you know what it is you also have money for. Whatever reason it happens to be, um, I mean, you know, for, that you that you're considering leasing. What what you find is that um, if you're going to keep that car for three years or less, um, then there's no question from an MPV, net present value perspective, um, cash, cash flow perspective, it's going to make more sense to have leased it. Um, if it turns out, by the way, that you're going to keep that car for more than three years, and the three years is not the hard, fast rule, as Jeff was pointing out, and I'm talking about cars, but I'm then going to compare it to the context center, then uh, very at, at a certain point, it actually does become um, more cost effective to have put it on premise. The point is this, um, and we're not talking about cars, and we're talking about much more substantial investments here, um, but I mean, this is a financial model, and you actually have to go in and do the cost structure, and you've got to look at the different components, and if you would, consider where it is we had those, those high costs. So you, you know, what you're looking at is the cost of licensing. What you're looking at and want to take, in, take into consideration is how many people do you have on site, because if you don't have anyone on site, and you don't have to pay that 96k per head, then maybe it will make more sense from just that perspective to, um, you know, to put it on premise. On the other hand, if you don't have anyone on site to maintain it, <laughs> you're going to be in trouble with that application anyway. So there's lots and lots of different factors and lots of sensitivities, um, which is why you really do need to, you know, spend that half hour or one hour, you know, if you have all your numbers, just just to throw together a model. And, and take a look at it. Um, so, so this is something that you know. There's no off-the-cuff answer. Je Jeff's, Jeff's off-the-cuff answer is, is is exactly right, um, but you do want to go through and model it. Shelby. Yeah. So the next question um, from an attendee was: We would like help in building out a TCO model to justify an investment in a cloud-based model. Can you help us with this? Donna, do you want to start that one off? Um, I'll start with, yeah, I'll start with that one. Sure, it would be our pleasure to help you with that. We do quite a bit of that. Um, we help people um, with their overall servicing strategy, sales, service, marketing, anything. We help um, with the technology selection. We help with the business cases. We help with the optimization and all things that you want to take into consideration. And we can just help with the with the TA, TCO modeling. But there's other ways to also get these kind of models. Um, a lot of vendors um, have their own models in order to help you make those decisions. And typically, by the way, they're not a TCO, total cost of ownership. To typically, they're ROI. Hey, Jeff, what's what's happening at Connect First in that area? So we do. We've got a, a pretty comprehensive TCO and ROI model that we present to our customers. Um, a lot of times we don't get visibility into the other vendors and who they're they're picking. Um, so the best we can do as a vendor is help them show the the total cost ownership if you were to implement Connect First, um, and really helping people understand if they are pitting us against a premises based installation how to do an apples to apples comparison. Because a lot of times people don't realize that you know there is the the full-time employee cost that there's the start the, the software licensing um, you know a lot of times people don't think about the uh, the 25 to 40 percent annual support within that that TCO um, so we, we help show people exactly what their business would cost if they use connect first and then help them make sure they're doing a true apples to apples comparison Great, so the next question we just got in, I think is aimed more towards Jeff. Um, it's, we are considering a cloud-based platform and we like the benefits, but everyone we talk to says it's really expensive to build integrations. Is that true or is there any way to bring down the cost? And this, this goes back to what Donna was saying before. It, it's actually the opposite. The premise-based vendors are the ones who are gonna try to charge exorbitant dollars to build integrations and to make disparate systems talk to each other. The cloud-based platforms kind of have that mentality at the core. Uh, and a lot of times if you have a CRM or a workforce management system that a vendor is not already integrated with, they're going to take that opportunity to build out an integration once and all of the customer base gets access to it 
uh, and and most of the good vendors aren't going to charge a single customer for that development effort. Um, so I think that you know unless we're talking about an integration with a proprietary system uh, that's using non-standard technologies for communications, I think the cost of integration is going to be ver very low out of the box. Great, Donna. Did you have anything to add to Donna, that? Donna, perhaps you could speak. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I, I I agree I agree with Jeff, and and the reason the vendors um, and by the way, it's not that the vendors are going to do this out of goodness of their hearts. The vendors are going to do it because they're going to be able to reuse it so many times. The premise-based vendor is supposedly only able to use that integration with one organization. When the cloud-based vendors decide to do this, they do make it available to everybody. So that gives them a much larger audience from whom to recoup those investments, which does allow them if they charge it all to keep them really, really low. But as Jeff pointed out, it really is a mentality. The cloud-based vendors want to get you up and running, and they know that if they start throwing all of these, you know, development and integration and and you know IVR script building fees at you and they're high, they're going to delay get you up and running. So they have learned the hard way, by the way, that no, let's keep these things as low as possible. Um, there may be some, but they're typically substantially lower than the premise-based vendors who, who see this as a profit center. Shelby? Great. So the next one, I think, is for both of you. The question is, do you also support clients in India? Uh, Jeff, you can take that first. <laughs> yeah, so the, that's one of the beauty uh, beauties of cloud-based platforms. We're, we really don't care where you're physically located. Um, from a, a business standpoint, we can support your business uh, internationally without a problem. We've got full international rate decks for outdialing into India. Um, you know, a, a lot of contact centers internationally are servicing customers in the U.S. and contracting with a U.S.-based company will typically yield the, the lowest cost on the uh, telecom and transport side. Uh, so, absolutely. And from DMG's perspective, DMG is an industry analyst consulting firm. And um, we, are, uh, we are a worldwide industry analyst consulting firm, and we do work all over the world. Great. So the next question is, what would be the factors that would lead a company to choose private cloud over public cloud? Jeff, do you want to start that one off? So typically a, a private cloud solution is going to be the same underlying technology, underlying infrastructure, but in a much more limited access. Um, private cloud is going to allow a little more dedicated resource um, to be allocated. U ultimately, I think the decision is, in my experience, is really based on data privacy and data concerns uh, as opposed to performance of the platform. Um, you know, both are, you know, a, a good cloud vendor should be able to offer a private cloud or a shared true multi-tenant cloud offering uh, because if it's architected correctly from the ground up, expanding or deploying new instances of the cloud software should be relatively painless for the vendor. Um, just keep in mind that if, if a private cloud is something that uh, you're interested in, a lot of times that increases the cost because the, uh, the mechanism of the financials is different in that it's not a multi-tenant platform where all of the paying customers are help absorb the, uh, the cost of the infrastructure. And just um, just just adding on, I mean, every, I mean, Jeff pretty much gave you the the business argument for one versus um, business case for one versus the other. What what what's happening is that um, there are certain industries um, that are going towards private cloud um, more so than than others. Although I w I will tell you that um, in the past 12 to 18 months. A surprising number of organizations have actually gone more towards some of the public cloud, but it is about data security. It is about uh, business, um, and it is about perception. Um, 
And so, you know, for example, if you're financial services, um, I mean, we do see a lot of financial services with private clouds. We see a lot of governments with private clouds. Um, we see universities with private clouds. Um, so it really depends um, on the, the orientation mindset requirements uh, of your organization. But also, as Jeff pointed out, um, any good cloud-based vendor should be able to set this up on a private basis or on a public basis. All righty, so Shelby, back to you. Yeah, so this question's for you, Donna. There are a lot of vendors out there. How do you know who to choose? <laughs> well, that's actually a really funny question. Um, there's actually uh, close to 150 cloud-based contact center infrastructure providers on a worldwide basis. Um, there are a lot of vendors out there. And so there's lots of different factors. Um, you know, I mean, we're two days away from releasing a 550-page report on the cloud-based contact center infrastructure market, which is, you know, designed to help end users. It's got hundreds of pages of comparisons of, I, I think there's like 12 or 15 vendors in that one. And we, that report looks at both leaders and followers. Um, very importantly, that report, and I'm, I'm not pushing the report, I just want to make some points about it, it also looks at best practices, it looks at customer stat. What's critically important, guys, while I'm doing a, a business case and talking about TCO and ROI today, I beg you not to make your decision totally based on the cost. I beg you, because there's a lot of other factors. First of all, you need to make sure that you find a vendor who understands your business needs, right? So if you are in the political business, you need to get a vendor who understands that when they say they need to scale and have bursts of you know over a hundred percent that they you really mean that and that they don't you they don't think you kind of mean that so you want to find a vendor for example with that kind of experience you want to find a vendor you know who understands your business I mean so that partnership and I know a lot of vendors talk about partnership it has to work and it has to feel right because you've got to be able to feel comfortable depending on that vendor um, you know to be there for you when they need and you know, keep in mind, it is also very much about dependability of the platform. Um, you know, if, if you know, regardless of the kind of business you are, you cannot, you really don't want to say to your customers, well, we went down because our cloud-based vendor couldn't keep the system operating. That does not want it. You don't want that showing up in your annual report, whether you're a small company or whether you're a big company. So you've got to have a lot of confidence in that. Um, and so these are things you want to check. You want to check customer satisfaction ratings. And you want to check references very, very carefully. Um, you want to make sure and, 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 and that, that with the vendor makes a promise that they're going to keep that promise. You want to find out how frequently that, frequently that vendor is going to introduce innovation to the marketplace. Critically important. You've got to make sure that they have both the business and the technical expertise to help you. I mean, let's assume that you're just trying to figure out how to use skill-based routing or you want to use something new, adaptive real-time intelligence routing where you're tying into your servicing applications to give you a competitive advantage. You want to find a vendor who knows how to do that. So these are just some of that. Now, will DMG's report help? The answer is yes, um, it will. Um, you know, we, you know, DMG, we also help people all the time with this type of thing. Because this is not, you know, you, you'll hear a lot of the cloud-based vendors say, oh, um, you know, you're, you're not married to it the way that you're not married to a premise-based solution. That's true. Um, it's very likely that you're going to be on a month-to-month -month basis um, or more typical, let's say, a one-year or two-year contract. Um, you're not married. Um, and, you know, when you buy a premise-based solution, it's a five-year commitment, as I joked earlier on, because going back to the CFO in year two and saying, eh, this isn't working, I want something new, is a great way, by the way, to lose your job. So it's not a good idea. You don't have that issue with the cloud-based vendors. That's true. But once you put it in and once you build those in integrations and once you build those implementations, you're going to want to keep it there. Um, so there's a lot of things that you want to take into consideration. Um, Jeff, you want to add to that a little? Jeff? No, I mean, I, you know, I think you're you're the expert there. Yep, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, now I can. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say you're. I mean, you're you're certainly the expert there. Um, I think if we were advising people which vendor to choose, that might be slightly biased. 
<laughs> okay, so the next question is for you, Jeff. Do you think switching to the cloud is cost saving to all verticals in the industry? Um, I think this is it's very similar to the, the first question. Um, the, the answer can't ever be always. Um, there's you have to take a lot of variables into consideration and you know there may be some verticals where it just doesn't make sense um, you know maybe you are in a vertical where you have a lot of highly technical staff already supporting your business that's one case where you know maybe you, you're not gonna have to add um, two FTEs so that changes the uh, the TCO model a little bit um, you know, but for the most part, in the in the more traditional contact center sense, I think most people are going to find good cost savings um, across all verticals. Um, you, you know, and you need to you need to look at some other things other than cost. And this is kind of what Donna was alluding to. You can't make your decision just based on cost. There's a lot of other value with a cloud-based solution that makes sense. Um, you know the Good cloud-based vendors are releasing software upgrades in very short sequences. So two, three weeks, you're always getting new features. You're always staying at the cutting edge. Um, you know, there's no forklift overhauls where you got to schedule 12 hours of downtime to to get the latest software. Um, you know, it's, all the benefits of cloud software in general apply to cloud-based contact center software. Great, Donna. Do you have anything to add? No, I'm 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 absolutely with you. I mean, you know, what was that? The Bond movie, Never Say Never. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, it looks like that's all the time we have for questions. Um, if we didn't get to your question, we'll follow up with you via email. Um, also, if you're looking for more information, you can feel free to reach out to either Donna or Jeff. Their emails are on this slide right now. We also have numerous resources on the Connect First website. Our most recent white paper is with DMG Consulting, and it's on the topic of contact center versus on-premise, on analyzing the costs. And we also have several blogs related to TCO and ROI. We thank you for joining us and we hope you found it very informative and have a wonderful day.